uh, look up the phrase, the dung of wolves. And as I researched it, it actually, I actually came across an article that had insight into that phrase, and the Lord began to minister to me in a powerful way. According to Chinese heritage, the phrase, the dung of wolves, is actually a military term signaling the outbreak of war. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking about 2014, mm -hmm. that God breaks open this understanding, and it's a Chinese military term mm -hmm. for, to represent the outbreak of war. And then the phrase they used was wolf smoke rising. Wolf smoke rising. It signals human ambition, treachery, and viciousness on the rise. Now, I don't know about you all, but since January 20th hit, <laughs> ambition, treachery, and viciousness has been on the rise in our nation. Um, the wolf dung and animal dung were used as beacon towers which were burned to warn of the approach of an invading enemy. So what they would do with these wolves is they would actually use the waste from the wolves to create a tower, and then they would burn that tower to show that there was an invading enemy. Now, isn't it interesting that God would burn something that smells so bad to let you know that there is an enemy yeah. in your midst? Yeah. <sighs> These were the early defense systems which served as beacon towers to relay military information and issue a clear signal in the morning and at nightfall. But here was the key. The smoke had to rise high enough vertically to be seen by the next watchtower over. Mm -hmm. So it couldn't just be some little, you know, little, little patty cake fecal matter. Right? right? It had to be a beacon or a tower yeah. that was set on fire that it would be seen far enough so the other watchtower could set theirs on fire mm -hmm. and the other person could set theirs on fire and it became almost like a domino effect to let them know that the enemy was approaching. Mm -hmm. So we know in, in Chinese um, culture, wolves were used as Chinese and Turkish symbols and the gazelle represents beauty and grace. And so in the prophetic urgency, God began to share these things. He said, he is speaking prophetically to us as a people of prayer and intercession. Number one, that we must be on our post. We must be on our post. We cannot afford in this hour to get off post as people of prayer. Number two, we must be beacons of intercession. When people see us, they need to know that we are a watchtower, that we are a beacon, that we can signal that the enemy is approaching. Mm -hmm. And we can't signal the enemy is approaching if we're in bed with the enemy. We can't signal the enemy is approaching if we're sleeping on post. Right. Right. Right? right. Number three, there is an invading enemy. As God laid out here, he said there is an invading enemy. Number four, human ambition, treachery, and viciousness are on the rise, as we clearly see. Intercessors and watchmen serve as the early warning defense system. Everybody say, I am. I am. An early, an early warning, warning, warning defense, defense system. system. So if I am not in place, there is no early warning for the believer to get together. That means the enemy just show up and start tearing stuff apart. Because nobody's in place to relay God's information. And here's the key, on how to war. So I'm not just in the tower. I've got to relay God's information on how to war. Are they coming in chariots or are they coming on foot? My Lord. How many are coming? Is it 50 or is it 300? Because if it's 50 versus 300, we need two different strategies right. for the kind of enemy that's approaching. Yes, yes ma'am. Are they carrying swords or spears? Mm. Or are they rolling out a cannonball? Mm -hmm. So we need to be on post in order to see, in order to give strategy and information on how to war. 
He also said they must issue a clear signal and the smoke of intercession must rise vertically to God. How does the smoke of intercession rise? It rises through our prayer. If we're not praying, what is rising to God? If we're only talking about prayer, <laughs> what is rising to God? So it's got to be a vertical position that the intercessor has with God that alerts everybody else. So it's not my horizontal position. No. It's my vertical position that alerts everybody. That intercession that's going up vertically to God. As this is done, he said, it is seen and signals to the next watchman so that the message of warning is continually passed so that everybody is warned. North, south, east, west. Everybody in the kingdom is warned. It is never a good thing as an intercessor to have half of your kingdom knocked out. My God. Please. It's not a good thing when you say on the south side, oh, we got this over here. We got, we got it. We got this territory. But the west side is getting towed out the hill. <laughs> See, some of us think that this is a competition. It's not a competition. No, no. It's not a competition. Everybody has to be in place and everybody has to man yep. their region and their territory, which means that watchmen have to see each other as partners in intercession and not competition. Amen. Amen. See. Amen. See. Watchmen have to warn each other so that the message continues to be passed. That means out of, if I have integrity as an intercessor, I shouldn't hold information that God is giving me in the realm of the spirit from the rest of the intercessors that need to know. Right. Amen. It doesn't do us any good right. if I know the enemy's coming from the south side and you're over in the north, but I say, mm, well, I guess that's not really important for them to know. No, it's, it's important. Yeah. It's important for them to know. Mm -hmm. Number one, so they can be aware of what is coming, but also number two, so they can pray for you all. Yes, indeed. And sometimes yeah. you can say, send some reinforcements. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. I get some help? Amen. Right. Amen. 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 And lastly, he says, as we stay under the grace of God, just like the gazelle, we will not fall or stumble or err. And then lastly, he said, the USA must pay attention to the Turkish na nations but also the Chinese who may align with the Turkish nations and attempt to invade us. Mm. Now this was in 2014. As you know in the news, China says they want to go to war with us. This is 2017. That's right. And God gave us this almost three years ago to say, watch your back, Jack. <laughs> watch those relations with these nations because they will attempt to invade. Now, I don't work for the C, uh, the, the, the um, what do they call them? The CIA. CIA, I don't work for the CIA, I don't work for the FBI, I don't work for NSA, no, but I work for GOV. <laughs> Amen. And because I work for GOV, GOV has some information for me, Pastor. Yes, indeed. Well, this is a very sounding message. As you're sharing, this is so powerful for us to know. But <clears throat> just the thing that was so amazing, you know, we just recently watched, uh, we've been studying about the free state of Jones, you know, about that there was Confederates, you know, war, you know, the Civil War and all that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then there was Confederate, there were some Southerners that's like, why are we fighting a rich man's war? And they were upset because they were put on the line while others were sitting in the house and everything like that. So there was like, a civil war within a civil war, okay? And so what happened was, I'm not at all advising anything about supporting, you know, Southerners or, you know, or any part of that war. I don't believe in war at all. But the thing we have to understand, number one, is that we can't be sitting there bragging about how big our house is or how much cars you have 
But how many people you have influence with when the whole nation is marked for destruction? Mm -hmm. You see, because we can be so focused on the wrong thing. We got to hear. So if you want to preserve what you have in the Lord, it is imperative to listen and to hear what each other is saying, not fighting one another. I mean, there's a big uh, issue going on in the kingdom right now or in the church world right now where we have people who are making the blatant lies about various cities in order to get political posture. And see, that right there is a damaging aspect. We cannot sit there and bring fraudulent information in an effort to try to win something that's, that's marked, targeted to be lost. And that, we have to share that, so I want to Amen. share that. And so as I was as I was getting back into this word here, the Lord began to speak to me about the wolf spirit specifically. Wolf spirit. And he said that the wolf smoke, he said there is wolf smoke rising in the church. There is wolf smoke rising in the church. And he said that that, that smoke rising. That wolf sent signals human ambition, treachery, and viciousness is on the rise. And people are wondering, why are these things on the rise? And God said, because the intercessors are not on post. The intercessors have moved post. He said there has been a wolf invasion in the body, and very few are warning. Very few are warning. Remember, the smoke had to rise high enough vertically to be seen by the next watchtower, which is our communication. And he said our intercession has to rise vertically to God. And, and as it rises, he takes our intercession as a signal, and he begins to relay help to others who are also watching on post. Mm -hmm. So if we're not praying, there's nothing for God to take and give to another intercessor, in the intercessor to help us out. Mm -hmm. Remember in the book of Acts, one of the things that the, that the apostles and disciples were praying in one region, they could hear spiritually the, the disciples in another region say, come over here and help us. Yeah. Yeah. And they couldn't have heard that if there was not yeah. intercession going mm -hmm. up for them to get that help. So God said, is anybody watching and praying? Is anybody watching and praying? He said, as a people, we must be on our post and we must become beacons of intercession. We must become beacons of intercession. Then he said, we must issue clear signals. We must be clear on the mind, the heart, and the will of the Lord. We cannot be clueless. We cannot be confused. We cannot allow the enemy to confuse us. And he said, we must remove our personal mindsets out of the way. It's not about what we think. Mm -hmm. It's about what God says. Mm -hmm. And he said the warning must be passed on and that we must stay under the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Psalm 1833 says, He makes me like a deer that does not stumble. He helps me stand on the steep mountain. Yes. Mm -hmm. He trains my hands for battle yes, so that my arms can bend bronze bow. God, you protect us with your saving shield and you support us with your right hand. So God says he wants to put us and make us like the gazelle that is graceful and has no error in her. Alright? He said rather than using, he said here's what's happening. Rather than using the dung of the wolves, the wolves are alive and well plundering the sheepfold. Mm -hmm. yeah. So rather than them being killed off and them being used for a smoke signal, mm -hmm. they're actually alive and well mm -hmm. plundering the sheepfold. Mm -hmm. 
We're going to go to Romans 16, 17 through 20. Romans 16, 17 through 20, and I'm reading from the New Century Version. Here's what Paul was saying. He said, brothers and sisters, I ask you to look out for those who cause people to be against each other mm. and who upset other people's faith. Mm. They are against the true teaching you learn, so stay away from them. Such people are not serving our Lord Jesus Christ, but are only doing what pleases themselves. They use fancy talk and fine words to fool the minds of those who do not know about evil. All the believers have heard that you obey, so I am happy because of you, but I want you to be wise in what is good and innocent, innocent in what is evil. The God who brings peace will soon defeat Satan and give you power over him. Mm. Pastor, you may want to check our videos. Thank you. So he says, keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching and turn away from them. In the KJV, it says it this way, these are slaves of their own appetites and they don't want to be free. Mm. Now, I don't know about you all, but I've met a couple of people even this week, <laughs> that don't want to be free. Right. They True. want to be enslaved. Yes. True. The KJV says they deceive by smooth, flattering speech and deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. Be wise in what is good and innocent in what is evil. And so Paul here is saying, I don't even want you to know sin at all. He said, I want you to know sin from afar as opposed to experiencing it. Because mm -hmm. if you're innocent in what is evil, that means you don't have an experience with it. You haven't touched it, you haven't tasted right. it, right. you haven't handled it. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord said this to me, he said, wolves encourage people to live in a way that offends God's righteousness. They know right from wrong, they know the penalty of sin, but they practice it and approve of those who do. That's a wolf. Mm -hmm. A wolf is not somebody that is just, oh, I just stumbled into trouble. No. no. <laughs> a wolf is someone who knows right from wrong, mm -hmm. and they know the penalty of sin, but then yet they practice it, mm -hmm. and they approve of those who do. All right? So I asked the Lord a question. How do sheep behave in wolf territory in light of what we know? He said, by nature, he said, let me deal with a little bit about sheep. By nature, sheep are defenseless. They have no strong teeth. They have no sharp feet to fight. So they're not swift to get away. <laughs> by nature, sheep are frightened. They may stampede or pile up against an obstruction and smother themselves if they get frightened. By nature, all right, by nature, sheep are wanderers. They stray away from the flock, mm -hmm. and they have no sense of direction when they get lost. Mm -hmm. By nature, <laughs> sheep can't protect themselves. They're easily killed by predatory animals, mm -hmm. and they have, this is important, they have no predatory instinct. Mm -hmm. oh my. They, therefore, they depend on a leader to guide and guide them. This is why it is dangerous because if a sheep gets attached to the wrong voice, they can literally be guided to their death. On the other hand, wolves are cunning, strong, swift. Get this. They hide in rocks by day. Mm -hmm. Oh, they'll come into the into the fold and say, Jesus is my rock. <laughs> Jesus is my rock. Wolves can hide in rocks yeah. by day mm -hmm. and leap into yeah. the fold by night yeah. and seize the sheep by stealth. Mm -hmm. So they will come amongst the sheep in the daytime and wait till nighttime under stealth and attack. 
Wolves are strong in body and teeth, and they kill animals two to three times larger than themselves. Mm -hmm. Wolves are able to carry a lamb at full speed. They're strong and they're swift. They can chase and run off with the lamb. Wolves are deadly. One wolf, it was reported, one wolf killed 93 people and wounded 30 others. One wolf. Wolves run in packs to kill. Some of them form a semicircle to run a sheep off a cliff. And they don't just kill for need, they kill for sport. They enjoy killing sheep. So the Lord asked a very important question. He said, I want to know about all of these teams. Do you have a team or do you have a wolf pack? <laughs> what do you have? Some leaders think that they have teams, but they have wolf packs. All right, let's go to Matthew 7. Let's see what Jesus said about the work of wolves. Matthew 7. And believe it or not, I'm about halfway done here. Matthew 7, 15 through 20. He says, be careful of false prophets. They come to you looking gentle like sheep but they are really dangerous like wolves. You will know these people by what they do. Now, isn't it amazing that we live in a time where people don't want you to look at what they're doing? They just want you to believe them. They don't want you to examine their actions. They don't want you to examine their fruit. Because if you start inspecting fruit, you're going to say, wait a minute, this is a rotten tree. Jesus said plainly, you will know them by what they do. Grapes don't come from thorn bushes. Figs don't come from thorny weeds. In the same way, every good tree produces good fruit, but a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Every tree that does not produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. In the same way, you will know these false prophets, what? By what they do. Not by what they say. Not by them sprinkling dust on you. Not by them pouring oil on you. Not by them putting you in a thousand dollar line. Not by them turning around three times. You will know them by their fruit. Not by how accurate their word is. You will know them by their fruit. That's what Jesus said. Yes. So here is three fruit of falsehoods. Based on Romans 16, if we go back to that, the first fruit of falsehood that Paul noted was strife. He said, the enemy expands his cause by dividing and conquering. Strife, pointless debates, Friction, controversial questions, disputes, and words that arise out of envy, arrogance, suspicion, and abusive language is not the authoring of God. If every time you get around somebody, <coughs> strife is evident, or strife shows up, or confusion shows up, it's a fruit of falsehood. Strife. The second fruit. Right? Because we know strife and discord are fruit of the flesh, right? And unity and harmony are fruit of the spirit. The second fruit is stumbling. Falsehoods promote stumbling. Legalism promotes stumbling. Um, you know, evangelist, prophet, Cheryl, you know, I would I would love for you to come and minister. But you gotta have a doily on your head. You gotta take off those hoop earrings. Your dress gotta be down to your ankles. And you can't speak for more than five minutes. Legalism promotes stumbling. Alright? Wolves prey on the weak, especially the weak-minded. The weak-willed 
on those who are not well versed in scripture. See, if Cheryl was, if, if she was well versed in scripture and I came to her with that, she would have said, listen, whom the son sets free is free indeed. God gives us a code of modesty, but he doesn't say you have to look like a bare wall in order to come into his presence. So she would be able to know the word of God to be able to fight off the legalism that I would be trying to press her into. All right? He said, with stumbling, these things are presented by people who are springs without water, clouds without water, and trees without fruit. The third thing is the attack against biblical teaching. These people will attack the tenets of the faith, such as Jesus came in the flesh. You've got a whole group of leaders now that don't even teach that. They don't even believe that anymore, that Jesus came in the flesh. When historically, it's proven that Jesus came in the flesh, even by people who were atheists and people who didn't even believe in Jesus at the time, noted historically that he came he lived, he died, he was crucified. Okay? Here's another one. Tenets of the faith. Jesus condones homosexuality. Where? Where does Jesus condone it? Matthew 19 gives us a picture where Jesus clearly defines what is, therefore he don't have to define what's not. <laughs> he says, marriage is between one man and one woman. Yes. He clearly defines what is, therefore he doesn't have to define what's not. That's what I okay? Read that. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> says, through the scriptures, through the text, that we must be saved by, we are saved by what? Faith and grace, mm -hmm. not of works, lest any man should boast. Mm -hmm. But then you'll have people that will come and give you 235 things you must do to enter heaven, and then only 144,000 of you maybe might want to possibly get in. All right? So we know that the fruit of falsehood is people who attack biblical teaching. Deuteronomy 13 says this about the false prophet. He sa it says that it is based on the prophet's actions, not their accuracy of words, but their accuracy of life. So as you read Deuteronomy 13, he says, I don't care if they presented an accurate word. Where do they lead you after the text? Do they say, come, let us go and worship other gods? That's an action. Come, let us go and worship other gods. But yet we have people that can give an accurate prophetic word, and they want you to bow down to Molech. They want you to bow down to the god of homosexuality. They want you to bow down to Greek gods. They want you to just bow, 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 bow. And people are confused because they're saying, well, what they say on Sundays is, is true, but how they live Monday through Saturday is going to be all wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got to, as the scripture talks about, examine their fruit, examine what they are doing, not just what they are saying. Um, I don't recall who said this. It didn't give me an author, but I wrote this down. He said, Every cult is either Bible plus or Bible minus. Every cult? Every cult is either Bible plus or Bible minus. In mm -hmm. other words, True. false teaching True. seeks to either subtract from what God said or it seeks to add to what God said. That's good. Legalism is trying to earn your way or they give you a license to do anything you want. So either one of those is falsehood. Legalism says you gotta earn your way. License or lawlessness says you can act any kind of way without obeying scripture or without obeying God. So both of those either distort or deny the clear cut doctrines of the faith and they seek to turn our worship away from Jesus to a person or a process or an idea. Mm -hmm. So what do false teachers do? They're either turning you away from Jesus or they're turning you to a process as your salvation mm -hmm. or they're turning you to an idea that's your salvation. Mm -hmm. You have some people saying, well, I am God now. 
I'm like, what, what scripture are you interpreting for this? Oh, well, that scripture that says ye are gods. Well, if you study it in context, he was talking about the godlike ability that men had during that time to judge. He was not literally saying you are a little god. Right. Break it up, break it up. <laughs> okay? So, wolves seek to turn Christians from self-denial to self-indulgence. If your entire sermon is about how you can indulge yourself, who are you talking to? <laughs> what Bible are you reading from? <laughs> wolves seek to turn Christians from self-denial to self-indulgence, from self-sacrifice to self-worship or hedonism. Do whatever makes you feel good. God don't mind. God don't care. Just do, just girl, just do what you want to do. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. I can't tell you who the sock to. Oh, yeah. I'll, the yeah. Lord's going to tell you. Oh, he's going to tell you. He's going to tell you put a sock in it. <laughs> Sanctify yourself and get some self control. That's what he's going to tell you. All right? Wolves are slaves to the flesh. Wherever there's a wolf, there's a flesh parade going on. It doesn't take long when you walk into any, any church, and if there's a flesh parade going on, just know there are wolves present. Because wolves are slaves to the flesh. They either never got delivered from their flesh, or they have returned to their flesh. Because some people start out well, and then they return to what snared them in the beginning. All right? Satan uses wolves to achieve his purposes, but the good news is, as Paul said, his final defeat is certain. He will be crushed under our feet. Amen. And if you feel like crushing him right now, just to remind him, just crush him. <laughs> All right. Three methods that wolves employ. Three methods that wolves employ. Number one, they prey upon the vulnerable and the weak and those who are new to the faith, those who are naive to cunning treachery or Satan's devices. They prey on those whose conscience has been dulled or hardened by sin, or those who may be in the trap of guilt or condemnation. Mm -hmm. I often tell people, if you are going to the altar every single Sunday for the same thing, that's condemnation. Mm -hmm. That's not conviction. Mm -hmm. Condemnation puts you under the continual burden of guilt, and it makes you think that God has not forgiven you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in habitual sin, that's different. But if you've stopped the process of whatever you're doing and you're still feeling guilt about it and you're still feeling like you have to go to the altar every single Sunday for the same thing, mm -hmm. you're under the spirit of condemnation. Mm -hmm. So you got to say, Lord, we break the power of condemnation mm -hmm. and we want to live free from that guilt because you have forgiven us and we're no longer habitually participating in that sin. Number two, Wolves deceive, they undermine and subvert. And he said this is happening now among leaders. He said many are leading double lives. Jesus. They're approving double lifestyles. And they're refusing to bring the truth about double lifestyles. Bye -bye -bye. So there's three different things happening. He said some are leading double lifestyles themselves. Some of them are not leading them, but they're approving of it. Approving of it. And then some are not leading or approving, but they're refusing to bring the truth on double lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Because, see, if I bring you the truth on it, then you may stop coming and then you may stop giving. Huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. They advocate flesh indulgence under the banner of grace, forgetting to tell the people that grace is not a sin-all-you-want card. It's not a sin-all-you-want card. Yeah. It's a power to live truth card. Amen. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Grace is not a sin all you want card. It's a power to live truth card. Amen. The third thing is they seduce by speech. They seduce by speech. They do not possess the Holy Spirit, so 
rather than turning to the Holy Spirit's wisdom, they use their speech to seduce people in. They enable people by appealing to their flesh. They promise a freedom while they are yet enslaved themselves. Their speech may be filled with promises, but no accountability or conditions from God. It's your day, it's your day, it's your day, it's your day. Reach up and grab it, reach up and grab it. Listen, have you repented today? Yeah. yeah. Because if I'm telling you to reach up and grab it, you might grab judgment mm. if you have not repented. That's right. We cannot give people a false sense of security in their sin. So how do we respond? How do we respond to these wolves? Romans 16 gives us a clue. He says, keep your eye on them and turn away from them. That's right. Be alert to the danger posed but don't move in the same direction or the same circles. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this is an important note, and somebody is going to disagree. But I know this already, and I'm prepared for it. Romans 16, if you go back, he says, keep your eye on this and turn away from them who operate in it. That's right. Please note, intercessors, prayer leaders, prayer warriors, pastors. We are not commanded to attack wolves. Ooh. We are commanded to avoid them. Avoid. Uh. I'm going to say it again. We are not commanded to attack wolves. We are commanded to avoid them. We are told to deny them fellowship we are not told to defeat or destroy them. Anywhere, did y'all hear anywhere today where Jesus said, go out and attack the wolves. <laughs> Get your flag. I'm coming. I'm coming. No. He did not say that. And we're wondering why. So we're losing intercessors. We're wondering why the sheep is getting tore up. Because we're going out and we're attacking wolves and God never gave us that instruction. He said avoid them. Deny them fellowship. Our task is to avoid and resist. God will do the defeating and the destroying and ending the opposition. We can bind, we can cast out devils, but there, he said, there is a different strategy that must be used with wolves. Mm -hmm. Wolves are not devils. Mm -hmm. They're not. Mm -hmm. So you've got to use a different strategy. Mm -hmm. All right. We're coming to a close here. Gentleman by the name of Estes Perkle wrote this in response to what Jesus said his, was, his advice to sheep was. He said two things. He said, be wise as serpents and be harmless as doves. <laughs> that was Jesus' advice to the sheep. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say, go over there with your toothless self <laughs> and your flawless <laughs> self, sheep. And go over there and start a fight that you can't win. Yeah. No, he didn't. I'm telling you, this blessed my very soul today. We gonna get some. We gonna get some understanding. Oh, what's he? He did not tell the sheep to do that. He said, "Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves." Now let's look at a serpent real quick. And we got about ten minutes, so we'll be done. A serpent is deaf to the sound carried by air. Mm. but heeds the sounds from the ground. A serpent is deaf to the sound carried by air, but takes heed to the sound carried from the ground. Mm. He is concerned about the foot, not the mouth. <laughs> Listen here. A serpent is concerned about your actions and 
not your toe. Mm -hmm. A serpent is concerned about how your foot is moving, not about how your mouth is running. That's good right there. <laughs> That's right. That's right right there. Mm -hmm. Wow. A serpent doesn't get involved in talk, in gossip, in secondhand reports. A serpent wants to know what are your feet doing. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. A serpent's eyes are always open even when they're asleep. Come on, somebody. Wow. You got to have your, your eyes open. Yeah. Spiritual eyes yeah. open. Natural eyes. You have to be on yeah. guard. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes, sir. A serpent is awakened by sudden motion and not stupefied in their sleep. Somebody wake me up. <laughs> A serpent doesn't use its tongue to attack, but uses its tongue to smell. A serpent uses its tongue to discern or pick up or sense their surroundings and uses their tongue to interpret. Somebody say, I don't have time to attack. <laughs> I've got to interpret. I've got to interpret. A serpent does not boast or reveal its location, but moves quietly. Remember, we said we got to move in quiet power this year. The principal method for a serpent to avert danger is concealment. I only come out when necessary. Hello. <laughs>
sit on the eggs and feed the doves. Where are the eggs at? Thank you. So they're faithful. Yes. Oh, All right. Doves don't settle in wolf territory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's a dove. Right. He said harmless as doves. Yeah. Doves don't settle in wolf territory. If they know it's a territory of wolves, they will not settle there. Mm -hmm. And lastly, doves have many friends and have come to be a protected animal because of its friendliness. Doves are used in warfare to get messages through enemy lines. That's it. That is so good. Can God use you to be his messenger? To be his intercessor. See, we're back at, at full circle. Can God use you to be his messenger? To get through messages through enemy lines. Can he trust you to be in the territory and not feel like someone else is invading? Can he trust you to not pick fights with the other birds of the field? Can he trust you to share the territory? Can he trust you not to be a sponge? Can he trust you to be faithful? Can he trust you not to settle in wolf territory? Mm -hmm. wow. Amen. This is the word of the Lord for today. Amen. 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 Yes. We're going to end with this. God is strong. Jude 1 and 24 says, God is strong and can help you not to fall. He can bring you before his glory without any wrong in you and give you great joy. Amen. So we're trusting God today that as we have received this revelation, mm -hmm. as we have received the understanding of what it means to be in wolf territory, mm -hmm. as we have learned about how cunning and stealthy that the wolf is, God says for us to be wise as serpents mm -hmm. and harmless as doves. He wants us to be patient. He wants us to use our bodily discernment. Amen? Amen. He wants us Amen. to be awake at all times. Amen. He wants us to be concerned about the movement of the foot, not the running of the mouth. Mm -hmm. He wants us to not boast about our location, mm -hmm. to not give away our location, but to move in quiet power. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and stand today. I thank you all for viewing. Those of you who are watching by live stream, please feel free to contact us. Our information is in our bio. And we're just going to open up in some prayer at this time. Pastor, you'll come forward. Thank you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Give God a great God. This word is dead. I thank God for this word is dead. Uh, I really feel fired up. I, God knows. He knows. You know, everybody, and see, the thing I get about this word, before we go into prayer, everybody looks at the serpent, and we know the serpent is evil, is wicked, is slimy, is slippery, is just deceitful of everything, but God says be wise as a serpent. So I'm like, you know, this is a, I mean, everybody who listens to this message and really gets the last 10 or 15 minutes of this message, the whole thing, but these last 15 minutes are something else, because when you understand the characteristics of how a serpent works. Not that we're going to be evil, not that we're going to be like Lucifer, nothing like that, but when you understand how to know when something is invading your territory, when you know how to sit yourself still and pray, when you know how to watch, you can be resting, your soul can be resting, but you're still watching to make sure nothing is invading your territory. These are characteristics, and the thing that got me is about the, the doves. Harmless as doves. Doves don't mind other birds coming into their territory. And if we as believers, if we as people of God could just understand, just because I come into your ministry or come into your areas to share as brothers, to share as a kingdom connected family, that everybody's getting upset. One of, of, of look at the, oh, watch that guy, watch that, watch that first. <laughs> And you know, we sit there and we sit there kind of destroy the very gift that God has given us and come knit it together. Yes. How yes. on earth are we going to come knit it together, yes. compacted by the measure we all can give, if we all kind of push each other away? Mm -hmm. Anyway, let me go pray. Let me pray. Hallelujah. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for every.
everything you have done. We thank you, Father, for everything you have said. God, there is no one like you. Even in this message about a, uh, a, a rising conflict and wolf territory, God, help us, oh God. Help us, none of us. Help none of us, oh God, to be prey to any wolf in this season, oh God. Help us not to be no longer any prey to political wolves. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Name. Well, policy and politics has caused us to be bleeding all over. It has divided the sheep. It has caused distortion and, dis and, and stress and carnage amongst this land, oh God. So Heavenly Father, we all repent for being savaged by political wolves, by the political White House right now, in the name of Jesus, by people who are just nothing but wolf pack in leadership. This wolf pack cabinet we have, God, we pray, oh God, that you would diffuse it, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Take that spirit out of this cabinet. In the name of Jesus, oh God. All this vitriol against the country, oh God, about people fighting each other, blocking each other, abandoning one another because of policy which has nothing to do with you, Christ. You said your kingdom is not of this world, oh God. And we're sitting there falling out with each other because of things of this world and politics. So God, we ask for your help. We ask that you restore us. You ask that you strengthen us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, help us to see how these things are coming to try to divide and invade our, our congregations and our places and our, 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 our centers of worship. God, let every leader, every pastor, oh God, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. In the name of Jesus, that divisive spirit of the world, that indulgent self-aggrandizing spirit of the world, we cast it out now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for your strength, we pray for your humility, and we pray for your effectiveness in anything that we've heard today, oh God, is how to be effective, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, when that, when that smokestack is going up, and the, and the warning is out that the enemies in the territory help us to take heed and know that there is an enemy in our territory right now trying to reap havoc of our lives. Help us not to turn towards that. Help us not to embrace or engage in the wolf pack. In the name of Jesus. When that wolf pack tries to come to our ministry through politics or media or whatsoever, help us to rebuke it and to cast it out. To not let it come, let us as shepherds, oh God, and, and other shepherds, as those called by Christ to give care over the flocks, oh God, of the kingdom of God. We pray, Father, that you allow us not to allow these wolf doctrines to come forth, these wolf initiatives to come in and invade the sheep, oh God, making sheep predatory when they're not predatory in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said your sheep will hear your voice. So help us as the true sheep to hear your voice and not follow the voice of these, this plethora of strangers in this land. Help us, O oh God, to be strong and be wise, harmless as a dove, wise as a serpent, effective, knowing how to work in the day, know how to operate at night, spiritual dark, spiritual light. Help us to understand how we are to live, move, and have our being so that we can stay alive and well and to expand the kingdom of God this hour. We pray these things in Jesus' most holy name. Give God a hand clap today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, give God a praise. Okay. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. We give God praise. We thank y'all for being here. God is a good God. I tell you. He is a powerful, powerful, powerful uh, a man of God. He just...